Welcome back. As you can see, I've made some progress on the prototype board I was making. Well, if you can call it progress, I've done some work. So I've soldered in the Raspberry Pi Pico and I did solder it directly to the board. Um, there's still a little gapping, but everything should have a good connection. Uh, I've soldered in the sockets for each of the 74HC595 with the exception of this one pin that did get dislodged, which I may have to correct later on. So I put the three, uh, first three uh, chips here. The other one was here because it didn't have room. Um, I put in each of the four LEDs with their current limiting resistors. You may have seen on the uh, previous video where I did some testing on this. I also put in an additional current limiting resistor and a variable resistor. Um, this is to try to help and correct some of the uh, current drain and also be able to dim the uh, LEDs. Um, I used the DS1820 uh, chip instead of the full probe. I soldered it directly to the board with the uh, 4.7K ohm resistor. So now let's take a look at the back of the board. So I did do some of uh, the wire wrapping and this is not ideal wire wrapping as you can uh, see. I Okay, I just noticed that I did melt these two together probably while soldering so I'm going to have to make sure that those two are not making a connection. So what I'm using is strands of Cat 5E twisted pair, which is 24 gauge wire. It, if you're using power over ethernet, you're doing uh, what, 48 volts at half an uh, amp. So 24 watts, this board would not be doing anywhere near that, I would hope. So I'm limited on the colors I can use. So I'm trying to keep this as color coded as possible to make troubleshooting easier. So the colors that I am using, I'm using brown for all the bonded ground connections or bonded uh, negative connections and green for all the 3.3 volt connections coming from the uh, pin 36, the V out. Uh, right now I only have ground uh, bonded to pin 38, but I do plan on bonding them together to the other ground pins, uh, uh, 33, 28, 23, 18, 13, 8, and 3. So, for anything that is not a true ground, I am using the orange, which is anything that goes through a resistor before it gets to ground, so all the current limiting resistors. Um, this pin right here, I could have, uh, did I say brown? I meant orange. And this pin right here, I could have done with uh, brown, but I was in the flow of doing everything with orange. Um, I have used solid uh, silver, and most of these are what I have cut off of any resistors, so any of the tails of any resistors that I have after I've cut them off the board um, or any other pins. And those are good for 
close connections where I don't need to worry too much about the uh, them uh, shorting out and needing uh, installation. Uh, so I use that over here when I was bonding the resistor, the 4.7K resistor, and also here connecting the ground points or not the well the ground pins from the uh, eight segment displays to the current limiting resistors now other things I've done is you may be looking here and thinking that that's not a good solder bridge that's gonna short out and so about that one um, that one and that one but that is deliberate that is the uh, serial clock and the it's a serial clock and one other type of clock I can't remember off the top of my head it is uh, the shift register and the serial clock Let's, yeah the shift register clock the SR clock and the storage register clock so those are bonded together and when those are bonded together the positive edge tripper if positive edge triggered if both clocks are connected together together the shift register always is always one clock pulse ahead of the storage register okay now I'm going to go ahead and each of those needs to get bonded together. So for any of the data wires like I did over here, I'm using any of the white wires, the white and green. I'm not keeping it consistent. It's again, I'm limited on how many wires I have. So I'm going to just in this video, just do a quick uh, show of what I'm been doing so I'm gonna first I'm going to tin the lead okay I haven't let the soldering iron uh, heat up so what I'm gonna do is tin the leads on this and then reconnect them even though there's a big solder uh, bulge there I can okay this is what I shouldn't be doing but the joint is on loose so that was not making a connection um yeah never touch your soldering iron but this is not a uh, safety video but it should be now of course i've had no problems with this soldering iron off of camera and now that I'm okay now if you can see there's a little bit of smoke so it should be heated enough okay okay now I'm able to tin the leads on this wire so I'm gonna go ahead and just put a little copper on a little solder on that copper end and do the same on this copper end and both of them are relatively the same um come to think of it i am going to just so i don't short anything out just trim off just a little off of each side okay this will make the leads the exposed ends a little easier now a problem i've had is None of my uh, strippers go down to 24 gauge. This one goes down to 18. And my other set of stripper crimpers goes down to 22. So neither one of them works well. Um, and for this, I am not ready to just purchase a 
another uh, stripper just to do this. Not often that you sh are uh, sh not often that you're uh, stripping a Cat Five cable. Um, even even in the event that I was doing any type of crimp, crimp down or anything like that, it pierces through. So it doesn't need to have the end stripped. You, it's not what the wire was meant for. So. Okay, so I just want to just get it heated up real quick and connect the wire. And as you could, same thing I, as I did with the um, power wire. I'm going to try to fish this around. Now, if I was good at what I was doing, I'd get all these wires to be relatively tight, wound around correctly, and not have wires sticking in the air. But this is the first time I've attempted to wire wrap a board. So it is what it is. So the key is to get this into the spot where I want it and not caught up in these extra pins from the Raspberry Pi Pico. Yes, the other thing is a lot of this is being done in reverse. So as I'm wiring this up, I have to make sure that I'm taking into account that I'm using the mirror image of the wiring. Oops. I didn't let that sit long enough. So I'm using the mirror image of the wiring, which in and of itself is shouldn't be a problem but again doing stuff like this on camera is not ideal that's why I've done most of this off camera um, so this is uh, on there there's a little bit of a overhang that should be fine I as you can see I've gotten solder into a lot of these excess joints and uh, I could go through and try to de-wick some of it out but as long as they are like these where it's just completely encased or they're bridging over to a joint uh, pin that's not connected I'm not concerned so what am I going to do next I'm going to take uh, another wire, bridge it to there, and then bridge it to there. And this would go on to the uh, serial clock or the um, pulse clock from the uh, module. And on from that, I believe I used pin 12, GP9, yes, correct. Uh, so on here, uh, so GP9 is about there. I will have to uh, count up or count down. It's pretty much in the middle of the board and GP9 which, yeah, GP9, I'd have to double check against the schematic and wire that in. And something just came loose. Yep. Okay. This ground wire right here came loose. So I'm going to fix that off camera. Um... And double check some of my other uh, soldering. So I'm going to wire in 
that I'm also going to uh, wire all the pins that need to get bonded together um, such as uh, the chip select, the output enable, and to see look at the diagram real quick and yeah so the uh, uh, serial in wire will be independent for each of the pins that um, it goes to the output enable will be uh, bonded together the same thing with the um, reset clock so um, the output enable is bonded, is active low, and the reset clock is active high. So both of those would be low, I believe. And then um, I would need to connect um, the QA through uh, QH to the a segment display so I'm going to do most of the wiring between the chips and to the eight segment display off camera uh, the next video I'm gonna do is probably testing to make sure that this uh, uh, temperature uh, probe is actually working and I don't need the eight segment displays working with that uh, for that so I'm going to make sure I don't damage this board anymore and we'll uh, have a video out uh, probably in a few days to a week with uh, the progress. Want uh, Thank you for watching. Go ahead and subscribe if you want to continue to see this content or see it in your subscriber feed and you have a great day.